of his disciples that three times it says he went and he prayed and he came back and they were sleeping. Look what he says. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Verse 39. Again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words, same conversation. We had, Lord, if there's any other way. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And they did not know what to answer him. Then he came to them a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? I love this next part of verse 41. There's so much power in this statement. And in here you see Jesus saying, it is time to finish this plan of redemption. Look what he says. It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Jesus says, enough. My time of being with the Lord, the decision has been made. No longer do I think Jesus was facing that sorrow and that grief. He says, enough. It is over. That he has made the decision. This is what is, this is what is going to take place. This is what I am doing. Arise, he said, let us be going. The hour has come. The hour for why I left the glories of heaven is here and now. And I am going to do it. I am going to finish the plan of redemption because that is why I was sent to this earth. What a powerful, powerful example. Though. We look at all different examples and, and illustrate to the love of the Bible. I don't know if there's a greater one than Jesus in the Bible. <coughs> he made the decision then in that garden that he was going to follow through. He was going to finish the plan of redemption. Although when he left the glories of heaven, that was what he was, he was coming to do. He made that decision that is what he was going to do. But in the garden, he made the decision, it's time to fulfill the plan that the Lord had, that God my Father has for me. We sing that song, Good, Good Father. Imagine being Jesus and thinking those words. We think of him from Jesus looking at us, you are a good, good father. Those truths are the same to Jesus and his father, calling him Abba. You are a good, good father. What was the phrase that we sang over and over? Perfect in all of your ways. Think about that. Think about being the son of God, St. Jesus. You are perfect in all your ways. And all of your ways include me drinking the cup of divine wrath. Me experiencing the sin of the world. A perfect, sinless Savior experiencing the sin of the world. Yet he is a good father. He is perfect in all of, your, all of his ways. Worship team, you come. I'm going to close by reading the last few verses before next week. I hope you will come back and we will see the rest of the story. In Mark chapter 15, it continues. We see the death of Jesus. Now it was in the third hour they crucified him and the inscription of his accusation was written, the king of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled what it says and he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by, think about this. Those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. I think I've shared this with you before. That is the point I would have came off the cross. I said, okay, I'm coming off the cross. He could have, he, he could have, he had the power to do it. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking among themselves with the scribes said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe, mocking Jesus. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, the Lord, the hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sekamadani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus, sitting there on the cross with the sin of the world upon him, and the Lord, the Father of God, has to turn his head from Jesus. Intimacy, no longer what it was. That is grief. That is sorrow. Some, uh, some of those who stood by him when they heard that said, look, he is calling for Elijah. Then someone ran and filled a sponge, filled with sour wine, put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink, saying, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. Now we all thank the Lord know the end of the story. This is not the end. Thankful that Jesus didn't come off the cross as he was being mocked. By nature, when someone mocks you, what do you want to do? You want to prove them wrong, do you not? You don't know what you're talking about. I tell you, if any of us would have been on the cross, we would have been off. We would have stepped off if we had the power. Jesus stayed on the cross. Jesus went through the agony and the sorrow. Why? Because he loves you. Beautiful beautiful picture of God's love for you and I. 
And we know, we'll look at it next week, he did not stay in grave. Although he died on the cross, guess what? He's not dead. He's alive. He is risen. We're going to experience that next week. Let's stand at this time. We're going to sing song of loving by Jesus. One we've never sang. The worship team has sung this, but the words are going to be on the screen. It's a hard song to listen to and not sing. So feel free to sing with them as they sing. But you be obedient as God has spoke. Whatever he's laid on your heart, if you need to come forward and pray, come forward and pray. If you can do what you need to do where you're sitting, do that. But you be obedient as God has spoke.
How thankful we are, Lord, for what you did for us. Lord, we can try, and we are to be a people of thanks and a people of praise, but Lord, I don't know if there are any words that we have that can express what you have done for us. Lord, I can't imagine experiencing the wrath of God. Lord, and we can be thankful because we do not have to experience the wrath of God because you did for us. You took our place. And Lord, you drank the cup that we should have drank. You died the death that we should have died. You experienced the sorrow, the grief that we should have experienced. Lord, we thank you for loving us in all of our sin and all of our weaknesses. Thank you that you are a God of mercy. You are a God of grace. That you are our redeemer. And God, you fulfill the plan of redemption. That you are about the Father's business. Lord, we pray that this week, as we celebrate Easter, that you would help us to realize there are people that we see daily. We have loved ones, family members, friends, co-workers, Lord, that, Lord, if they do not come to know you, they are going to experience the wrath of God. Lord, you came so that none would perish. Lord, you died that death. You went through that sorrow and that grief so that all would become children. God, help us, Lord, to look for those opportunities to share your love so that others can experience the grace and mercy of God. Lord, we thank you for the way you spoke to us this morning. I pray that we will meditate upon your word, that we will let it transform us, that we will let it change us, empower us, encourage us, and strengthen us to be who you've called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.